Awesome. So yeah, I guess I'll kick off with uh, this one question from JH as uh, we're waiting. Um, with so much on your plate, what motivates you to experiment with new tech and bring others along? I've kind of, this is how I learn, you know? I mean, I think the social peer pressure, the time boxing uh, is just really, I don't know, it's, 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 often, it's often how I learn. I'll actually share my screen because I kind of explain this a little bit in my blog post that I wrote. Um, so let me find it. Let's see, excel.gumbar.com slash posts. Will that get me there? Yes, awesome. Um, ignore this if you're from the FWB community. I already changed it. Please don't cancel me. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be I, I thought it would be fun to spend the month of February. So that's what this is about. It's called Web3. I like stupid names. They kind of motivate me to take advantage of you know, kind of an arbitrary constraint to, to get started. Otherwise, you know, it's like, I'll just do it later. Right. Um, like I'm sure many of us have sort of been like, I oh, will figure it out at some point in the future. And then you look back and you're like, wow, I spent six months, all this crazy stuff happened. I didn't really partake in any of it. Uh, and I spent, I've spent a lot of time in kind of other creative industries through my own personal stuff and through running Gumroad and a lot of these creative industries that are kind of hard, uh, like drawing, painting, these things that require like tens of thousands of hours to get really, really good writing. Often there's this kind of thing where like in writing, you have National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo, every November you write a novel, which I've done once and uh, drawers, artists have uh, Inktober. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of make up like a Web3 thing as like just a forcing function for me to learn. So that's like not much more than what I've said. Um, and, and you, you know, crypto is kind of this like inherently social thing. There was this kind of community token, thing that uh, I just thought, you know, the best way to learn is to actually just like start building in it. Um, and I will collect all these resources and put them in uh, this notion that I've been working on. So, uh, and then I'll categorize this and I'll, I'll share this with the chat. So, so no one has to like type in links and stuff. And I'll put this in the show notes um, when this is on YouTube for those who are following along, it should just be there. Um, so I thought I'd spend like, I don't know, two seconds. Like there's a bunch of people in the Discord. Um, and by the way, if people have questions um, on anything, I'm happy to answer them. But I thought I'd spend like five minutes on like why I think crypto is interesting. I think there's, it's sort of still pretty contentious topic. Uh, there's still a lot of problems with it that have to be worked out. Um, so I thought I would just kind of discuss that briefly. Um, and the best thing I've I've read on sort of the, so the subject that I'm really interested in is called soft technology. It's called Breaking Smart. The book this book or set of blog posts is called Breaking Smart. Andreessen Horowitz basically paid this dude a bunch of money to uh, to write about it. And it's awesome. And his sort of thesis is that there's sort of three big sort of inventions of soft technology or discoveries of so soft technology by humans. First is money. Uh, and the way he defines soft technology, everyone should just read this blog post, is basically something that you can kind of create more value than actually exists because the sort of mimetic power of these things, right? If we both agree on our, our on a legal system, no materials have to kind of get used to construct that thing, but it, it might kind of like make society run better or whatever. That's kind of like the TLDR, but go read that post. Money is the first, right? We basically were bartering things um, like, let me trade you that tree for that pig. And that's kind of you know pretty inefficient. You can't say like that tree is worth like 1.78 pigs. Every pig is different. Um, so there are all these problems that, you know, medium of exchange, unit of account, store of value that money solved. Money meaning something, it can be like seashells, right? Like we all agree that this kind of seashell that we is super rare. So we probably know that we're not going to see a bunch of inflation, a bunch of people finding new seashells. Um, and you can kind of, you know, it just makes society run better. The second form of soft technology is writing which is we were speaking to each other, there's kind of oral tradition. And then we invented writing, which allows kind of this like intergenerational transfer of knowledge that led to the printing press, the libraries, the internet, right? Like all of that kind of stuff. And software has thesis is kind of like the last, uh, which is basically, uh, yeah, so software. Like you can now sort of store information in effectively like nothing, like thin air, right? Like zeros and ones, which is pretty cool. Um, and so anyway, fast forward, that kind of leads to the internet and all these cool stuff all these cool things. And then Bitcoin is, is kind of like the first like internet native money, right? And the problem that they solved uh, is the Byzantine generals problem, which I link here, which people can check out, which is basically this idea that when you have, a, how do you like get a bunch of people to kind of trust each other or actually not need to trust each other, right? Um, because if you have a bunch of people who are attacking, the example is if you have a bunch of generals surrounding a town or something like that, 
how do you get them all to kind of agree with each other and know that each other, no one is lying. And the, basically the way you do it is every time you send a message, it kind of costs money. And so you kind of have to, to, to fake a message, you have to kind of convince 51% of the people uh, and it's just expensive, right? And so the, basically the solution, this sort of distributed computing problem is that you just make it cost money. Uh, and so to override the system, you need 51% of like all of the capital effectively in the system. Uh, and that's just expensive, right? Um, and so the kind of the incentives don't don't make sense. So anyway, you can, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering, butchering this, but everyone should go read all of these things. And then Ethereum came after Bitcoin, which basically said, that's cool, money. You basically figured out how to take gold and put it, you know, make it digital. Um, you created like a software version of mining, which is pretty dope. Um, and then Ethereum came along and said, that's really cool, but like, you can't program it. Like it's not really programmable. Um, and so they kind of came up with this concept of smart contracts. And basically you have like a ledger, but not, it's not only a ledger of, account of money that everyone owns, um, but actually kind of like these, you know, as, as this computer kind of runs, they, you can actually kind of like have programs embedded in them, right? So it's not as simple. It's not just like, oh, Sahil is sending this, this wallet is, you know, loses five coins and this wallet gains five coins. Um, but you could do something like this wallet, you know, gives five coins to this wallet. And if this other thing happens on chain that we know, that goes back to me, but if it doesn't actually happen, then it still goes, right? You can kind of build logic uh, into, into this kind of like monetary system, which is really cool. Like now money is kind of programmable. Um, and then the last thing I would kind of recommend reading is uni the Uniswap white paper, which really clicked for me. Like the, so far it was kind of, it's kind of cool, but it's really kind of an, it's, it's kind of an asset class play where you're like, okay, this is cool and interesting, but like, what is the, how does society actually look different, right? Because of this. And Uniswap was the first time that really clicked for me. Uh, because you can effectively take something like the NASDAQ, which is, I guess, kind of decentralized. You have these market makers, but it's kind of pretty centralized uh, and say, just like Bitcoin, you know, allows anyone to kind of participate in the system, you can create a central, uh, a decentralized exchange. And they, even the concept of a decentralized exchange is, is kind of an oxymoron, right? Because like inherently you cannot have like a decentralized exchange is the lack of an exchange. <laughs> So it's, it's the lack of a centralized exchange, right? There is no such concept as a decentralized exchange. It doesn't exist because if it did, then it's not central, it's not decentralized, right? So kind of a weird thing. A decentralized exchange is more like, like, you know, a, I don't know, a more of a, a network of people connecting each other, but you're, you're kind of taking a transaction for the connection more than facilitating the good because all of these, these transactions are effectively peer to peer. Anyway, that's my understanding of it. Um, and then, uh, and then what, what do you trade on Uniswap? Well, you trade these ERC-20 tokens, right? And so the FWEB3 token that everyone got 300 of so far um, is an ERC-20 token, uh, which is a, you know, once you have this kind of programmability, you know, you need standards and these standards develop over time. And one of these standards is ERC-20, which basically, and I can actually like show everybody, but you can see these. Um, so this is kind of like what a smart contract, you know, would look like on, on sort of, chain if you can you know and and there's almost no code here because it's all kind of inheriting from this class right this erc20 class um and if you go into this one you probably can read all these things and the great thing about bitcoin is so much of this stuff is open source so you can just keep clicking around and keep learning about well what is interesting about erc20 well it's like you need all of these functions right if you have a currency you probably need a function that's like what's the total supply right? Uh, who, like how much this wallet address, like what is the balance, right? Um, all of these sorts of things. And so once you know, okay, every every token, every fungible token is going to need these same functions, then you just basically agree collectively on it. And then you create a, a format and then Uniswap can say, hey, as long as you have these functions, right? As long as you subscribe to saying you are an ERC-20 token, uh, you can add your uh, token to our, our decentralized exchange and then people can buy and sell it against ether or or anything else, right? Um, which I think is 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 really 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 cool. Um, and so and then you can do stuff with it, right? Like you can do stuff like, for example, I built this thing, um, and I also built this other thing called MetaZoom. So this is going to get really weird as I I use this for my own security, so I don't actually accidentally disclose something. Um, but if you go to all right, let's change it back. Wait, how do I change it back? Oh, I can't change it back. Wait, oh, it didn't actually change. What am I doing? Uh, give me one second. I think I messed something up. 
Oh yeah, I messed something up. How am I gonna get back? One second, everybody, I messed up. You might see my face for a second, and then I'm gonna go back. All right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I built this little app. You can go to web3.xyz and you can connect your MetaMask. And then you, you know, if you have these tokens in them, which you should, um, then it, it should work. So I think I can do it. Um, oh yeah, I have to, uh, I have this thing hidden. So log in with my MetaMask. And if I refresh, boom, it says you're logged in as this and you have 8,400,000 tokens, right? Which I think is pretty cool. Like this is pinging a decentralized database, right? This website is effectively just like a JavaScript file that's hitting the Ethereum blockchain, probably through some intermediary, um, but, you know, is hitting uh, Ethereum blockchain. And, and you, you know, so effectively it means like, I don't really, like I can make this, you can fork this, you can make your own version of this, which I think is, is cool for something like money in which you probably don't want a centralized person like being able to print more of it, right? I guess you're trusting me in a sense to like, you know, I, I am sort of centralized because I have 84, I guess, percent of the supply. Uh, because I created it. So I started with hundred um, percent, but anyway. Uh, and so, yeah, what else can I, what else can I show you? I mean, I can show you how I, what I did. So I, I created this discord. It's not that hard to create a discord. Everyone's probably done this. Then I went to collab land and I found, uh, you know, they have these docs and collab land is pretty simple. Uh, it affects effectively allows you to create a discord bot and say, Hey, if this person has this many of this token, uh, allow them to add, you know, basically give them this role. That's basically all it does, right? Because then Discord can do all the rest. And this is like a really interesting thing that you have to kind of figure out about Web3, I think, which is like, what part should be decentralized? What part should be centralized, right? Like the vast majority, I, I think, should be centralized, should be not on the blockchain. Like what should be on the blockchain is ownership, like kind of ownership records. Um, but everything else, I think it, it's just way better to just reference, uh, reference that. So anyways, this is what I use. So that's Discord. Um, I also had to deploy the smart contract. So let me talk about that. Um, and I have a video, uh, this is the video that I use literally is so it's like a seven minute YouTube video, um, where this guy goes through deploying this thing. And so I will do exactly what he, he will do, um, which is you just Google the open Zeppelin smart contract wizard. And obviously I can do this really fast. Probably took me like a couple hours to just Google around and find the right answers especially because there's so many like different versions and things have changed and things like that. But effectively you can go here. This is kind of a wizard, right? Kind of a WYSIWYG ish wizard. So I can say, okay, I want to create the web three token. I want to call it web three. I want to create an initial amount of tokens. I do. I want to create like 10 million of them. Um, I want them to be burnable. So this is kind of like, you know, how this was inheriting from ERC 20. Now it's ERC20 burnable, which means you now have extra methods that whatever this inherits, burnable effectively allows people to burn tokens that they have. So if you have 300, you can just basically burn 100 of them, right? Effectively de sort of deflationary behavior. Uh, and this is it. I mean, like literally, like this is it. And, and you know this is it because if you go to the website and you click on the token smart contract, which will take you to uh, Etherscan, which is basically kind of a GUI on top of, uh, you know, graphical user interface on top of uh, Ethereum, you can see this is the code, right? This is the code that I deployed uh, to the blockchain. And like, literally, this is it, right? This is exactly what I deployed. And uh, so let's do that. Like, what does that actually look like? One other crazy thing about uh, Ethereum is because of, there's no real server involved, right? You basically have this front end JavaScript, and then that pings Ethereum, that pings the blockchain, right? And so one really cool thing that means is that it's so much easier to build something like a in-browser code editor because you don't you can just do it all with JavaScript. It's just a front end little box on the website itself that you know, which is pretty pretty awesome. Um, and so Brian, I mean, like literally, this is like this is it. I mean, this is this is what I wrote. I mean, this is what I deployed. This is what I mean. The beauty, you know, there's this word that people often use in crypto called composability, which basically, uh, you know, people use the metaphor of Lego blocks, right? You don't have to start from scratch. When you buy a set of Legos, like one of the amazing things about Legos is kind of every new Lego piece works with every other piece or every new design set thing, right? Everything is compatible uh, because of these standards. And so I created this ERC20 token, 10 million. I can send it, do all these sorts of things um, because I just said, this is my, like, basically give me 10 million token, fungible tokens. And I mean, this is it, right? Like mint, the, all the constructors is the name that, you know, the kind of name and the ID of the symbol and then mint, 
you know, to the sender of the message, right? So if, if you think about the this sort of world computer, right? Imagine like a, a, you know, if you think of Bitcoin as a series of transactions, right? Like a ledger of transactions, maybe a way to think about Ethereum is like a ledger of messages, right? And it, a message can contain variables, right? And so one of those variables is the sender. The sender isn't me, I'm the one deploying this contract. And so this effectively just runs this mint function uh, that, you know, pretty self-explanatory, probably you can figure it out, like create 10 million of these and send them, you know, assign them to this, uh, to the deployer. So that's it. So if I wanted to do that, I literally just, I guess I can copy to clipboard and you can download it and do it locally, but way easier than that is to just open it up in this IDE that exists. And so you can open it up in this IDE, it's now here and, you know, you can compile it. I don't even know what most of this stuff even means. I guess you can compile it, publish on IPFS or something like that. Um, but if you want to deploy it, you literally just go here, you pick injected web three and you can do a little bit more research on this, but this is like effectively you can think about it like local development on your local JavaScript blockchain on, you know, just to test the code really doesn't have any of the data of the, you know, hundreds of millions of transactions or whatever on Ethereum. Um, but injected web three will actually use your MetaMask uh, to deploy, you know, if you ever need to sort of, and, and obviously to deploy it like costs money because you're, you're working with the, um, with the, uh, you know, live production code like it's not free to to ask everyone to run your code right that that, that requires some money but you effectively just hit injected web3 you you select your account i'm already connected i guess and then you just hit deploy that's it i mean hit deploy there's like a pop-up that will appear um i guess maybe i'll hit it and yeah it'll you know like there's some things that cost some money um it's effectively just a, a few dialogues and then boom like and I, I can show you what it would look like if i did it locally right so like let me do it locally um, so, you know, this fake account on this fake JavaScript thing has a hundred ether in it. I can deploy it and you can kind of see that happening. Um, and, uh, let's see what, uh, what that looks like. And so I think that looks like it deployed successfully in this local JavaScript blockchain. And so you have these functions and you can kind of run these things, I guess maybe it didn't deploy. So it's still deploying. Effectively, you can test your code locally and then you can deploy it to production, which in this case, you don't have to do a lot of testing, right? Because there's basically any, like nothing there. Uh, and so I've minted this coin. I've put it into uh, the Ethereum blockchain. Then I created the Discord community. And then I went to collab land and said, hey, anyone who has this specific, uh, you know, 300 ERC-20 or 100 of these ERC-20 tokens, uh, allow them to, you know, give them this role, assign them this role in Discord. And then in Discord, I said, anyone who has these tokens um, should be able to see these extra rooms, right? So if you go into Discord, if you're watching this on YouTube or something like that, you'll see that there's these channels that are kind of public. Um, and then there's these weeb, I can't, weebs, right? Weebs, like weebs, uh, February weebs, I don't know, whatever. Uh, and so, yeah, you can see these channels if you're if you're not a FWEB, but then if you're if you are a FWEB, you'll be able to see these channels where I kind of talk about um, stuff and where we'll actually be building all of this. So you should get some tokens um, either from someone in the room uh, or in the in the Discord. You can just jump in here and go to the chat and ask kindly, um, or you can buy them on Uniswap. Um, so yeah, and then I wanted to talk about well, what's actually happening. In in Web3, uh, people keep asking me, there are all these questions. Uh, do we need to do anything else? Uh, la, da, 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 da. What's going to happen in February? Am I going to be late? Do I have enough time? Uh, lots of these kinds of questions. Um, so I thought I would tell you kind of what I plan to do. And so what I plan to do in Web3 is to build a little game. Uh, people are probably familiar with Wordle at this point. Uh, and so I thought it would be fun to build a kind of Wordle-like game, which is like a single page app in which you complete tasks with your wallet. So just like, for example, you log into this website, uh, web three app to check how many tokens you have. Basically, I can, you know, I don't have to just say you have this many. I can say something like, you know, make this ball green if you have this token or if you have this many or whatever, right? I can kind of make it more interesting. And so my thinking is that I effectively build a little game that has three levels, right? Sort of the, the metaphor, the visual metaphor of three. Um, so sort of there's three levels, each level has three things. And then the awesome thing about it is that it is effectively on chain, right? So 
the job that game itself isn't on chain but what i'll do is i'll build a front end that will kind of you know you connect your wallet and basically these like similar to wordle uh let me show you what i kind of the idea that i had in here in building you know similar to kind of wordle you would be able to tweet obviously you, people can fake it but the cool thing that's different than wordle um is in this case, you can't make it up because you can have a URL and say, look, this is the wallet that I own. And look, you can see that on my wallet, I actually completed all these tasks. So my goal is to basically build an app uh, that has two components. One is the front end, uh, which is basically just a more complicated version of that. And I'll talk about kind of what the nine things may be. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest, like I have to figure that out by the end of the month. Um, so this is kind of peer pressure for me too. Um, and and then a backend thing, right? I'll probably deploy another smart contract because I can't just do something in JavaScript that says, oh, if these nine bubbles are purple, uh, allow them to mint this NFT because, you know, what if, you know, what if someone did the nine and then sent the URL to a friend and say, hey, you can just go here to mint your NFT or here's the contract address, right? Something like that. Um, and so you actually have to do the verifications of that NFT minting um, on chain. And so I will basically try to write a smart contract uh, game by the end of that will act as a game that effectively is a sort of nft minter but it's only going to work if you've completed whatever those nine qualifications are and so by the end of the month hopefully um there will be kind of a a paper trail of like okay this many people got airdropped this token this how many people went you know got this this level blah, 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 whatever and just just for fun you know just for fun to learn um and maybe there's you know, it's, it is like, I, I like this idea of time boxing. So I thought it'd be really cool if this thing found some modicum of success this year. And then next year we kind of make it bigger and bigger and bigger um, and kind of hopefully make it a thing that, you know, just like NaNoWriMo, just like Inktober, there's kind of like this nice, easy way um, to kind of get people into this thing, which is kind of complicated. So anyway, I, I know I talked a lot. I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, here are some ideas of kind of the things that I was thinking about doing. Obviously, often with your wallet is kind of like step one. And that is pretty magical, I would say. Like when you realize like, oh, wow, I have kind of like a key that just like unlocks websites and they don't, I don't never have to create a new account again. Like that's pretty cool. Um, getting the 300 tokens, which if you're, I think I sent it to 1,080 people, cost me $16,000. Definitely Web3 needs to work on that before real mainstreamification happens. Um, but if you don't have them, you can go to Uniswap. So I discussed how cool Uniswap is, but let me just show you. So you can go to Uniswap and Uniswap effectively is a decentralized exchange where you can say, I want to convert, you know, let's say I have 0.5 ETH and I want to convert this into Web3, right? I want to buy Web3 tokens or something like that. Boom, I can buy 27,000 or whatever, right? There's like very low supply. I'll add more supply. I don't, to be honest, I didn't realize how expensive it was going to be. I will try to add more supply, but you can, you can buy like 300 or whatever, right? Something like that. Um, yeah, exactly. So 300 is not going to do anything crazy. And so you can, you know, it costs 14 bucks. In theory, it costs 14 bucks. The problem is if you hit this button, you'll see it actually costs an extra 38 bucks because gas fees, everyone talks about in Ethereum, because again, running a distributed system is very, very, very expensive. I think you can, you can, you know, switch to Poly, Polygon and let's see what happens there if I do that. Um, switch network to, to Polygon and then da, 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 switch to this and and then, uh, you know, let's see what happens. So let's say I want to buy, you know, Web3, I want to buy like 300, to, I want to buy 100, right, to get into the thing. I don't know if it's actually going to be cheaper. Yeah, because I'm not, it, it's not always, there's, the, oh, wait, no, I'm on Ethereum again. I don't know. Anyways, mess around with this stuff. We're going to do a lot of this in the Discord. I'll, I'll be kind of like doing a lot of stuff in the Discord. Like I plan to build this thing live uh, in front of a lot of people because frankly, I'm going to need to for me to actually do this because uh, otherwise I'm, I get busy with other things. Um, but anyway, 300 for three tokens, sending tokens. So you can, you can send someone tokens really easily. This is also pretty cool, right? You have this decentralized sort of currency. So you can just go in here and say, I want to send this person, you know, let's say, I don't know, I have a friend, let's say, I don't know if Naval has Naval.eth or something like that, but let's say he did, I can say, Hey, I want to send you some Web3 tokens because I want you to hang out in my discord. Boom. 300 sent, right? So like all of this stuff, I didn't have to build. All I had to do is say, Hey, in this universe, of seashells and trees and pigs and this and that, there's now 10 million of these tokens, right? And and uh, and now I get all this other free, sort of free functionality. Um, and then if I get to do all of that, oh yeah, and then if you complete the game, I, I kind of, I want 
you to be able to mint an NFT because I think it'd be kind of cool to be like, oh, you have a year one mastery kind of NFT, kind of like a Boy Scout badge that you know there will only ever be this many of. Um, but then you also get a bunch of tokens is, is my is my goal. So I don't know what these will be worth by the end of the month or something like that. Um, I assume not much. I would not do this uh, via, um, you know, to make a bunch of money. Like this is not that. Um, again, like I own what 84% of the supply. So like if this thing goes, like I'm the only one getting rich. So like, don't, I don't know why you, anyone would, but um, I've tried to kind of purposefully architect it. I actually wrote about this. So I'll, maybe I'll put this in the, in the, and the thing, but I kind of thought about, okay, what are the different approaches? You could do this NFT drop, which is kind of what Loot did, which is you just have a smart contract, everyone can mint, and then they get this like NFT and that NFT gets them access to this Discord. Um, I decided like, I don't know, art, I just didn't, wasn't the right fit. I think, I think the kind of FWB approach, the fungible token approach where you just give a bunch of people um, a token. The one really nice thing about, I think the way that I did it is I required the Google Forms auth, which basically means that you can't just you know, have a million wallet addresses and get all of the supply. Um, and so this is actually the token I did. So maybe I can check all these things off because I did it. I decided I don't really need a sub newsletter. I ended up using MailChimp and boom, I did all this. So we're done. And then, yeah, just my goals. Um, I didn't really mean to share this. So this is really my goals. <laughs> uh, no marketing really speak here, accessible to everybody free, ideally free, you know, Again, there, there are some sort of fees that are sometimes unavoidable, but I wanted it to be as free as possible. And I did literally airdrop a thousand people for free, uh, a bunch of these tokens. Um, and uh, and I wanted it to be easy for people who aren't in Web3 to join, which I guess um, maybe I should have covered like getting a wallet address and all of these other crazy things, but it, everyone should have a MetaMask wallet like I have. Um, and not an investment, right? Like ideally learning first, like if you can learn, your, your earning potential in this industry will be stupid right uh like in like a, a thousand x more than if like the best for, like if you got pretty good at trading uh so just learn to build be helpful create real value for people and that's the way uh to 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 do really really well in this ecosystem obviously there are many ways to do really well in many ecosystems but that's kind of the, the way that i think about it and i just like the simple metaphor of like there are 10 million coins that i just created you know um i think that's like a pretty simple easy way to think about it um, and then I have other ideas that, you know, depending on how far we get, it would be fun to experiment a little bit with these different ideas. Like, a, you know, obviously people have built voting systems before. I'm not saying that no one has done this again. I'm just doing this from scratch. I want to go from zero to one myself so that I can learn, you know, all of these things. Um, cause I think it's, it's kind of important if you've read the sovereign individual, like, you know, to be sovereign, you kind of need to know how to do certain things. Right. Um, and, you know, one idea I had was there's a Web3 Twitter account. Kind of weird that it's centralized. <laughs> and so what if you could, you know, say, hey, I want to I want to write a smart contract. And of course, again, this is like there's some Web2 here, there's some Web3 here. So the way it would work is you would basically create a Twitter app. Uh, and then you would you basically say, I'm going to tweet based on this, what this smart contract is saying I should tweet. But all I'm doing is 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 really, you know, outputting what the blockchain is, is saying. And then you could do things like you can stake tokens into this smart contract in order to vote. And then you can have like eight people who are part of the community who are like the, the tweet uh, clan, right? And they're the ones who decide. Um, and anyone can do that. And, and I just think, I don't know, I, I, it's gonna be really interesting to see how this kind of develops. I plan to just solve my own problems. Uh, so as we kind of do stuff, I'm sure we'll run into issues and things will be annoying. And obviously the big one is like, this is expensive. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, you solve them, you build them. And I even had an idea somewhere in the chat. There was like a startup idea that I had. Um, where is it? Let me see. Startup. Startup idea. Damn, you guys have been talking a lot. Where is my startup idea? No, I want my startup idea. Startup idea. What is it? I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, job boards. It's kind of funny that <laughs> In this like a uh, Web three thing, uh, people were talking about uh, jobs and and finding jobs, and people are linking to these like centralized job boards. And I was like, wait, what? What if you had a job board that was effectively a smart contract? And I guess the way it would work is you could basically mint kind of an NFT, which would be like the job title and this and that. And then you know, part of that is you can mint it with different characteristics, and then you would have a web UI interface that would sort of display, you know, the 
whatever those NFT, like the last five minted NFTs or last 50, right? Like that's kind of how you would build like a paginated job board in Web3 kind of world. Um, so that's a startup idea for you. I'm sure it's stupid. Uh, many ideas are stupid, but that's okay. Uh, the point here, like, I don't think I'm doing anything incredible here. Like I'm just learning. Uh, uh, I had this uh, quote about painting in my book. Um, basically, the goal about painting is not to create good paintings. The goal is to improve your brain's ability to make good paintings. That's the goal here. Um, and so anyway, I've been ranting a lot. I would love to answer any questions people have about Web3 or anything like that, or if anyone has like support Q&A, trying to get set up with this thing. Um, and then we can kind of wrap things up in, in, in a little bit. Um, Josh asked me an unrelated question. All right. When do the minimalist entrepreneur applications get approved? Uh, I appreciate uh, you allowing me to plug my other business, my side hustle. So I wrote this book, The Minimalist Entrepreneur, uh, that mentions Web3 a total of zero times. And, but it's good, really helpful. Turns out there's more to the world than Web3, right? Uh, but anyway, I teach this course and uh, he's asking about uh, when, when I'm getting back. So the answer is Thursday. So by Thursday morning, Pacific, I should get back to everybody. I've sent out the first set of, app, uh, of approvals and then seeing how many approve. And so anyway, yeah. Uh, anyway, questions. Catalina has a question. Please explain the gas cost in transactions. Yeah, so gas is like this interesting sort of idea that basically I think I think you know Bitcoin also has this idea. So I think it, it and I don't I don't it's I don't know if it is called gas in uh, Bitcoin, but uh, Bitcoin land I forget what it's exactly called. Uh, but basically, there's you know you you have a network, and you know we were talking about this sort of Byzantine generals. Uh, sort of problem where, you know, you kind of secure the network by effectively asking everybody, like every time, you know, to send a message you need to, uh, you know, or to participate in this network, you kind of have to be doing this, this, this work. So it's, it's a non-zero kind of thing. And, uh, and then gas costs is effectively, basically imagine like how much does it cost to secure the network divided by the number of transactions? Like that's kind of, you know, how much it's going to cost, which is effectively just like, supply demand, right? Like if a lot of people want to use the network and there's not that many people that are providing sort of the mining supply to secure the network, then it's going to cost a lot. In theory, like gas costs could go down a lot. You just would need a lot more supply of people, you know, producing, uh, wanting to sort of secure the network, right? So it's kind of just like if you, you I kind of just think of it like the MasterCard 3%, right? 3%, like Stripes 2.9 plus 30, like gas is kind of the credit card transaction fee um, to kind of, deploy things or do anything, contribute basically anything to the, to kind of the world computer. Um, Aswin asks, what are your thoughts on web three domains like ETH? What is the use case? I think the use case is, is, is kind of like what I showed where, you know, if I wanted to send you money and you, I knew you were Aswan.eth, I could just say, Hey, I want to send the person. And I think the way it works is a reverse lookup, right? Which basically means who owns the Aswan.eth, uh, NFT basically, uh, and whoever owns that send these tokens to that owner, right? And so it's it's kind of I think basically a shorthand, right? So instead of having to memorize someone's telephone number, you can just say call Sahil, right? It's kind of like that. Um, and there's of course more things you can do there, like over time I think. Um, but effectively, I think of it just like a sort of a a simple way to reference a uh, you know a person on in this ecosystem. Um, or a, a wallet in this. So mine, for example, if you want to send me some free whatever tokens is S4H1L.eth. Um, it's kind of a username, right? Basically. What drives the price of our token? Just so, again, supply demand. Um, there's a certain amount of liquidity. Uh, I don't want to get too much into Uniswap because it can get pretty crazy. And I'm sure I'll sound stupid because I don't understand all of it. But Uniswap is this brilliant thing where you basically, the way it works is you have these liquidity pools so you have, let's say on one end, one side, you have like a million Web3 tokens. And on the other side, you have like, let's say one ETH, right? If you want to buy a bunch of Web3 tokens with a bunch of ETH, uh, you have to give that pool ETH and get back Web3 tokens. And so you're inherently going to create this kind of supply demand curve, which I think is called a bonding curve. Um, and I think they can have different slopes. I don't know what the kind of the default one is for, for Uniswap, but effectively you kind of just have this supply demand curve uh, and there will always be availability, right? Because if there is, let's say, one Web3 token left, it's going to cost like a million ETH, right? Like you, you'll kind of get to the singularities on either side. Um, 
So basically, you know, but, but more likely the reason you're probably seeing it as a zero is because it's just such a new token that it hasn't been kind of accepted into these registries. In this world of decentralization, right? What is to say like, you know, how many ERC-20 tokens must get minted every second, every day, every minute, whatever, right? And so you can't just list them all. It would be the spam problem, right? It kind of is why we need proof of work. Like you don't, if everything is free, you just get a bunch of email spam, right? Um, and uh, and so I think it basically over time you can submit, you can honestly, you can pay some money. I think a lot of these like new startups pay a bunch of money to get listed in a bunch of different places. Um, so eventually I think that will just change. Um, Ashwin, sorry. Um, Um, Faye Sola says, I know you've covered this on the web app, but we're using our wallet address to log in. Exactly. So download MetaMask, which everyone has already done because you already have these tokens. But this sort of, at least the US way to get into, into Web3, right, is you create a Coinbase account. The way that I would do it is I would create a Coinbase account. Then I would, you know, do the KYC stuff, enter my bank account information, basically pull some money from my bank account. US dollars into crypto, probably buying Bitcoin. And then I would, you know, let's say Bitcoin or Ethereum. And then I have an Ethereum balance and then Coinbase will allow me to send that to a wallet address. So what I can do is then I can download MetaMask on Chrome. MetaMask will give me a wallet address. They'll say, hey, we just like, you know, Bitcoin, we like I magically created 10 million coins. Like I magically created a wallet address for you. Here you go, here's your wallet. Um, and then you tell it, you told me that, and then I gave you some tokens based on that, right? And so that's the wallet you would use to log into, log into stuff. Um, Yovan asks, does Gumroad have plans to integrate Web3 functionality somehow? No. Um, I'm just doing it on my own personal, my own personal time. Don't cancel Gumroad, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Michael asks, what programming language do you recommend for writing? I think you kind of have to write them in in solidity, you know, because effectively think about there's one computer called Ethereum, right? And that computer runs solidity. I'm sure it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, but effectively you're writing code in solidity. Um, I think there are probably are higher and lower level abstractions of it. Um, but basically if you're on Ethereum, you're writing in solidity.sol. And the best resource is for me was crypto zombies. That's what I learned. Like literally, if you go through the links that I put, that's all I know so far. So I, I know enough to figure out the community, like, a, I don't know, like, I, obviously I have some programming background. So some of the concepts I, I may understand better um, from the start, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's basically all I know is all in that, in that thing. And I'll learn probably more in the next 28 days than hopefully all I have learned about crypto in the last 28 years, right? Um, the beauty of compounding uh, interest or whatnot. So anyway, uh, hopefully that was helpful to people. I don't know, but uh, I'm going to stop sharing. I will put this uh, video on YouTube so people can follow along. So if you're watching it later, go to web3.xyz. That website will constantly be updated with stuff. Uh, and that will take you to Discord and Discord will have all of the uh, stuff, right? And so web3.xyz, Discord, go to Uniswap, buy 100 tokens to get in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So hopefully that was useful. I'm going to spend this month building that little game. I'll be really active in that Discord. I'll be answering. I'll basically be doing Web3 customer support for free in that Discord uh, for the next 28 days at least. And then we'll see what happens beyond that. Take care, everybody. See ya.